Amy, I have something to ask you about next weekend. All of my grandkids are coming together to visit. So could you also ask Mary to come by too? Hi, Karen. It's good to hear from you. I see. That's nice of all of them. I'll let her know and see what she says. What do you mean you'll let me know? You think she might not come? I can't really answer for her there. But recently she's been feeling really down and not very sociable. I'm actually really worried about her. Oh no, did something happen at school or something? I'm not sure. She's keeping very quiet about it. At the moment, we're just keeping an eye on her to see how she acts and if anything changes. That really is a worry. But, I mean, the school Mary goes to is a public school. You can only imagine what kind of children go there. It would be no surprise if she was getting bullied. I don't think it's anything like that. As far as I know, all of her classmates are really good kids. I don't know about that. You never know how they really act, especially when there are no adults around. But you know, if she is feeling down right now, it might be just a thing for her to come by and see all of her cousins. It might help her get out of her rut. I'll even prepare the cake that Mary loves so much. I'm sure she'll be thrilled. Thank you for that. I'll talk to her. Mary's the only female grandchild I have, you know. I can't help but dote on her a little. Well, being your child is a drawback, but the only one she has. I'm sorry. There's nothing to apologize to me for. I mean, you already married my son, Chris, and gave birth to Mary. What's done is done. And besides, she's quite smart even though her mother didn't graduate past middle school. At least she seems to be. I heard she's not planning on taking entrance exams, so one can never be sure. She should have taken them just for the experience and the memory. Mary was really against taking them. This is one way that you're far too soft, Amy. I thought that you would have learned a thing or two by now from me and Chris. You can't be negligent when it comes to your child's education upbringing. I guess I shouldn't expect too much from someone without any education. All I plan on doing is supporting Mary with whatever she wants to do. You need to get rid of that low-class way of thinking immediately. Most of our family are doctors. Mary needs to take her exams and prove to those around her that she is a brilliant girl. Although, no matter how brilliant she may be, she is a girl after all, so it'll most likely be one of the boys who will take over the clinic. What a shame. If she could have been a candidate to take over the family practice, I'm sure she would treat me even nicer than now. She's not thinking about anything like that. Right, right. I forgot it's useless to try and say anything to someone as uneducated as you. Really, I wonder what a brilliant doctor such as Chris saw in you. My head just hurts thinking about it. Anyway, say hi to Mary for me. I really want her to come. Karen, I have something to talk to you about. It's about Mary. Hmm? What is it? Is it true that you kicked her out of your house? She just wasn't there all of a sudden. It just took me a little while to realize. You must have kicked her out if she said it. She said you told her that since she's my daughter, she isn't really your grandchild. That you have enough grandkids without her, so you decided to treat her like a stranger. She was also the only one who didn't get any food for lunch from her. Is that what happened? I'm so sorry about that. My daughter's grandkids all came too. I just barely saw Mary all day. So that's how you've been treating her the whole time? She came home crying and finally spoke to me about it. She said that it's been like this the entire time. Mary said that? What a vulgar little girl. You can't treat children like that. It's despicable. What are you talking about? You have no proof that I treated anyone in any kind of way. Mary is only eight years old. How can you already be discriminating against her amongst all of your other grandchildren? Mary is just making things up or blowing them out of proportion. She probably just wanted some attention. That's what kids do. Sometimes any attention is good attention for them, even if they need to lie or act out to get it. 
Mary doesn't do things like that. She doesn't lie. How would you know that? Parents never view their children objectively. And kids who don't get enough love and attention at home usually try to find other ways to get it. Chris and I have done everything we can to raise Mary right. And you are the one who wanted her to come by your house today. To invite over an eight-year-old and then treat her like that on purpose, how low can you get? Well, she is my son's daughter after all, so I thought I'd invite her over with all of my other grandkids. You should be grateful that I even considered her to be one of my grandkids at all. But, you see, I noticed something unfortunate when she came by. The older and bigger Mary gets, the more and more she starts to look like you. I guess the apple really doesn't fall far from the tree after all. So you kicked her out just because she's my daughter? I told you from the beginning that I never kicked her out. She just left all on her own out of the blue. Is that so? Whatever. I fully understood what you're about now. Oh, really? Fine, in that case, I'll make sure to not have her around anymore. I went out of my way to have her over and even got her cake, but I guess this will be better for the both of us. It's a pain for me to have a girl with your jeans around my house, too. That works for me, too. Good, what a relief. My daughter's kids are all boys, too, so I won't have to worry too much about someone being worthy to continue the clinic. Although, it is rather unfortunate that I won't be able to see Mary's mopey face anymore. I'll never forgive you for treating Mary like this behind her backs. We'll never be meeting with you again. Go right ahead. I'm glad to hear it. All of my other grandchildren are doing far better and have finished their middle school entrance exams, passing into prestigious schools. I don't need to see Mary again. It's not like she's going to have a bright future. She was unfortunate to have you as her mother, after all. Mary and I are different people. Who knows how she'll turn out? Since she's your daughter, she'll probably end up pregnant as a teenager as soon as she gets into high school. It's always the dumb kids who go down that road anyway. And then she'll drop out just like you, like mother, like daughter. I'll make sure to tell Chris everything too. Thanks for everything up until now. We won't see each other again. Amy, it's been such a long time. Who is this? I don't have this number in my contacts. It's me, Karen. Chris's mother. I lost my phone a while back and had to get a new one. My phone number also changed, so I guess that's why you don't have this number. And so what? Why are you texting me? What do you want? Stop being so cold. I wanted to congratulate Mary. Mary just passed her college entrance exams, right? Yeah, she did. I heard that she got into Harvard. Isn't that amazing? I really wanted to congratulate her for something so fantastic. Doesn't matter if it's Harvard or not. Going to any college is a good thing in of itself. But everyone knows the name Harvard. She must have really studied hard. I'm sure Chris is really happy for her, too. Right. I always knew that girl had something in her, that she would become something. Well, all of my family do well in the end. They do have my genes, after all. It's what I expect from my granddaughter. I'll throw her a party to celebrate. Tell her to come by mine when she can, okay? I don't need any celebration from you. Instead, apologize to my mom. What? This is Mary. I'm just using my mom's phone right now. Oh, Mary. It's been such a long time. It's Grandma. I want to see you as soon as I can. Take a look at the messages I just sent you. Hmm, just before? Apologize to your mom? You want me to apologize to Amy? Yeah, exactly. In the past, you said so many horrible things to my mom. I want you to apologize for that. I don't think I really said anything so bad. What could you be talking about? Don't you dare say you don't remember. I won't let you. All the messages are still saved on my mom's phone. 
You always said that she was a low class and stupid for not making it past junior high school. You said lots of other things worse than that too, didn't you? I know all about it. Mary, don't get so worked up about it. I was just still young and stupid at that time. I did say some strong things, but that was because I didn't really think before I spoke. Do you really think you can use youth as an excuse to do whatever you want? And anyway, this was 10 years ago. You were definitely adult enough at that point. So don't you dare use such a stupid excuse. Mary, I don't understand. Why are you so angry? I contacted your mom because I wanted to do something for you to celebrate the good news. I don't want anything from you. You're the one who always used to look down on me and treat me like dirt. Do you really think that I wouldn't remember what happened when I was a child? I'm trying to tell you that Amy and I just didn't have the best relationship back then. That's all. It was completely one-sided. You're the only one who acted badly. She tried so hard, hoping that one day you would accept her into the family. But you just blocked her at every turn. Look, don't worry. I'll apologize. That's what you want, right? If you're going to apologize, then show some sincerity. It's up to her whether she forgives you or not, though. Mary, you come from a long line of doctors. That's why you decided to work hard, get into a great school, and become a doctor too, right? The only reason I decided to be a doctor is because of Dad's influence. Because I look up to him. It has nothing to do with the rest of the family. He helps people every single day. And I thought that I'd love to be like him too. Believe me. I'm not trying to live up to any expectations you might have for me. But I can still help you out in some way. I know lots of doctors and others in the medical field. Remember that connections are the most important thing in this world. I don't care about anything like that. Your contacts and acquaintances have nothing to do with me. I don't need or want any help from you. My dad will help me, and that's all the help I need. How rude! Who taught you to talk to your elders in such a way? I bet Amy's making you say things like this. No, she's not making me do anything. My mom is amazing, kind person who's always supported me. If anything, it's probably from you that I learned how to speak rudely to others. I mean, I can't even count how many times you used to speak badly of others in front of me. Me? I never did anything like that. Of course you did. So, I don't want any help or celebrations or anything from you. If you want us to forgive you, you better come over to her and beg. You only reach out to us again because you heard that I got into Harvard. I'm not going to be the one to make any effort for a person like that. You're going to regret speaking to me like this. I don't think I'll regret anything at all. In fact, I'm sure you're the one who will regret things in the end. I know that the other grandkids that you had such high hopes for didn't do as well as you had expected. They either failed their exams or just completely stopped going to school. Too bad you couldn't find the right heir for the practice. Actually, I couldn't care less about that. Goodbye, you old hag. Amy, I have something to talk to you about. Is it okay if I come over? I want to apologize to you. Is this Karen? What do you need to apologize to me for? For everything that happened between us. And of course, with Mary, too. I'm very sorry about what has happened so far. Is there any way you can forgive me? What's done is done. I don't even think about it anymore. But I haven't made it up to you properly at all. It's fine, really. My family has nothing more to do with you at all. That's all I need, not an apology from you. Don't say things like that. Remember that your husband is my son. We're connected by blood, and Mary as well. I still think of her as an important member of the family who can continue the family business. I thought you said your male grandchildren were more than enough. You're the one who said that Mary had no place because she was a girl. So please, look after the grandkids you think are more important enough to deserve your attention. We'll do things our way on our own. But all the others ended up being completely useless.
apart from Mary, one other younger child took college entrance exams but ended up failing. And today, I got a call from his parents. Turns out he ran away from home. I heard that he had been pressured by everyone to do well. It must have gotten to him eventually. No, he just didn't have any talent. It must have been his father's genes. I never should have let my daughter marry him. All the others are much the same, too. They strayed from the path, so to speak, or barely making it into low-grade high schools. Mary is the only one I can really rely on now. Mary's also related to me, though. So, as you said, she can't be all too great with me for a mother. I'm just a low-born woman who never graduated high school. That's not true at all. I mean, look at what you were able to achieve despite your family situation. It wasn't because you're not an intelligent person. So, while understanding that much, you still decided to make fun of me before? That just makes me want to have nothing to do with you even more than before. Don't say that. I really am sorry for how I behaved. I really reflected on it and made a change. At this rate, there won't be anyone to carry on my husband's medical practice. Then, I guess it will have to shut down. There's no way I'll let that happen. It might not be a big practice, but the family worked hard to keep it running. That's got nothing to do with us. You made sure of that before. Now, never message me again. Chris also has no intention of involving himself with you either, so you can save yourself the bother of trying to contact him. Amy, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have looked down on you or said such horrible things. I'm really, really sorry. I don't care what anyone says about me. You're free to do what you want after all. But I will never forgive you for what you did to Mary, your granddaughter. Even if Mary did find it within herself to forgive you, Chris and I never will. Please, Amy. I'm so sorry. I'll even get on my knees to beg forgiveness. I'm getting sick of hearing the same thing from you over and over again. I never want to see or hear from you again. You can just think about and regret what you've done for the rest of your life. I'm sorry, Amy. I'm sorry. As Mary said, you're the one who ended up with regrets, not us. You were also the one who didn't care about cutting ties with us. Have you really forgotten what you said yourself up until now? I wonder who really is the one with no brains. After that, I blocked Karen wherever she could. Of course, Chris also supported me and ignored all of her texts and calls. Her husband caused a big fuss over who was going to take over the clinic. Nothing to do with us anymore. Karen also blamed her daughters for not giving birth to a worthy enough child. And from that, that, her other children also began cutting tides with her. With her. They say that no one wants to speak badly of their own children because of the love, par love parents feel. But Chris's sister found out that wasn't the case and had to wash her hands. All of the grandchildren who they thought might succeed and run the clinic started to move away from becoming a doctor as they grew up and followed other passions. The clinic itself will have to shut down with no one to run it. But as I said, none of that concerns my family at all. I think it's good for them to re regret the mistakes that they made and continue living with them. Mary, on the other, on the other hand, started college and is having great time on her way to becoming a doctor. But more than that, she says that she is extremely grateful that I raised her in such a kind way and always supported her dreams without trying to force her down a certain without trying to force her down a certain path. I might not be the smartest, but I'm happy with the way I've raised my daughter. She always she is willing to help, and she has also many of them before. She's never been the most sociable person, but is always ready to lend a helping hand. It took her a long time to even tell me about how her grandmother was treating her. I'm sure it's because she didn't want to upset me or make things more difficult for us. Just shows what a kind heart she had, even as a child. Chris and I are going to continue to look after her and support her in any way we can.